Mirak Topolanex, the current Czech Prime Minister, and he takes over the six-month EU presidency on January the 1st, 2009. For the first time leading the Union, the Czechs will have to conquer the hearts and minds of their partners. Many member states think that Eurosceptic nationalists will hamper Prague's European action. With the Lisbon Treaty blocked by an institutional stalemate, Mirak Topolanek will have to defend himself from domestic political ambushes while giving the EU efficient leadership. Prime Minister, welcome to Euronews. First of all, aren't you afraid that uh, the tensions uh, among political parties and also institutions in your country will be weaken your position as President of the European Union? I don't think that it will be essentially different in any other country. Next week I'll probably have negotiations with the leader of the opposition and we'll find some modus vivendi for the presidency. I believe we will find an agreement because it's in the Czech national interest to show we can mediate the European discussion. In that sense, I don't have any worries. These tensions are within the party, your own party, which is also the, the party of a, of a president who is uh, claiming himself as a strong Eurosceptic. So how to deal with that? Well, I have to say that my party is not Václav Klaus's party anymore. Václav Klaus has irrevocably broken ties with the party that he founded. But this is rather good news than bad, as a president should be above parties. I do not believe that our domestic political scene is worse than in neighbouring countries. And I do not want to give a lecture here about the great coalition in Germany, about the problems in Austria, about the political tensions, for example, in Belgium and in all the other countries of the European Union. I do not believe that the political discussions and tensions in individual countries should influence the presidency and the reality. And it's not the case. All these, the countries that you have mentioned, all these parties and the coalitions, uh, which of course are weak, as you're saying, uh, are all openly pro-European, more or less, rather pro-European. This is not the case uh, of, uh, of the Czech Republic, where the struggle between pro-European and Eurosceptics is very strong, uh, and it is also influencing all the debate around the, uh, the ratification of, uh, of a treaty, of a Lisbon Treaty. That's a little bit of an artificial discussion. I consider myself as a very pro-European person, and yet I have some reservations about the whole range of things that are a reality. And in the opinion of some, I'd be considered a Eurosceptic as well. That means that it is an artificial discussion. Czechs are generally very pro-European, certainly more than Austrians or some other nations. The political scene is rather divided about the depth of integration, about the European project as a whole and its further development. Not that they would be against the European Union, against the European community. And uh, when it comes to your six months of presidency of the European Union, aren't you afraid that uh, the current presidency, the French one, uh, will be try uh, to, uh, say, overshadow your activity? Like, for instance, this proposal to hold summits uh, in France when it comes to Eurozone and to financial and economic matters. Uh, this would not be for the first time. Uh, and it's not only because of a very impulsive and action-oriented person, Nicolas Sarkozy. Nikola, really, if there's not a solution within five minutes, then he shows his temperament and he tries to get to the core of the problem. It doesn't bother me, I'm the same. Nevertheless, the French have always had a tendency to a little bit sort of prolong their presidency. Do you share the view of uh, the French and other countries that uh, a, a huge control on the financial market is needed to avoid such a crisis or not? I would say I share the opinions of those countries that think that the actions should be coordinated, that there should certainly exist higher control of the derivative sector to make it safer. It's not only the Czech Republic that thinks that very strong national controls should be carried out, that current regulations should be implemented and made more precise rather than introducing a new system. 
precizace té regulace než nějakého nového systému. Don't you think that a European regulation, a regulation at the European level is badly needed? A strong one. I evidently think that the European Union is suffering from over-regulation. There are voices heard at the European Council saying that the whole policy of Barroso, of Barroso's commission, better regulation, is wrong. And here we'll evidently get into a controversy because I don't believe this. I really believe that the financial crisis is something that Europe hasn't seen since the 1930s, but equally, that we cannot break all the rules. Uh, how do you think the European Union will have to deal with, uh, with, uh, with Russia in these uh, six months uh, during your presidency? First of all, will you work uh, with the United States for the creation of this uh, anti-missile shield? Samozřejmě, že potenciální vybudování potenciální základ. Evidently, the potential building of a base on Czech territory worsened relations between the Czech Republic and Russia. But the Russians admit that if it were not the Czech Republic, they wouldn't have such a problem with it. So it's largely a geopolitical problem. O to víc to je pro nás priorita. So much more it's a priority for us, even though I don't consider the six-point plan that Sarkozy agreed on with the Russians is entirely successful, I'm for opening a discussion with the Russians that actually has already started in Geneva. Russia cannot be out of the discussion, and we cannot accept that the discussion won't continue. On the other hand, with our experience, the last Soviet soldier left our territory on the 30th of June 1991. Everybody must understand our worries on energy, on foreign policy, on geopolitics. That's why it's good to be in the European Union.